Welcome everybody. Nice to see you all. We, we have the opportunity here to welcome uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Doris Saez from the University of, of Chile. Uh, she's going to be talking about uh, some work that the University of Chile has been work doing on remote uh, microbits. We uh, ourselves have a lot of interest in this area, given the fact that we have uh, uh, a need for this in the northern communities here in Ontario and Canada in general. And uh, we have been in collaboration with the University of Chile and Professor Saez here uh, has uh, kindly uh, uh, agreed to make this presentation and he's, he's been visiting us for, for a few months uh, and in an exchange we have with the University of Chile. So let me introduce Professor Saez before her talk. Uh, she, she got her M a Master of Science and PhD degrees from, in electrical engineering from the uh, University, uh, Catholic University in Chile, Santiago in 95 and 2000, respectively. She's currently a visiting professor here at the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. Uh, she's an associate professor with the Department of Electrical Engineering at the University of Chile uh, in Santiago. The current research interests include uh, FASI systems uh, control design, FASI identification, predictive control, control of power generation plants, and the control of transport systems. Uh, her work is, is being applied right now to these uh, particular issue of microgrids, remote microgrids. The process is the chair of the Chilean chapter of the IEEE Computational Intelligence Society. She's an associate editor uh, for the IEEE Transactions and FASI Systems. Professor Sass? Thank you very much, Claudia. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you for coming for my presentation. I am talking about modeling and optimization of microgrid located in a select village in the north of Chile, Guatacondo. The content of this presentation, first I am going to motivate this topic, talking about, about some challenges in Chile in terms of energy supply. Then I am going to describe the project, the microbial project located in this small village in the north of Chile. And then uh, in that uh, uh, project we developed some research in terms, first at design level, before to install the microgrid, it's so important the generator of low profile of the microgrid, and in this case, we propose a self-organizing map. At the operation level, uh, we design an energy management system based on optimizer using a rolling horizon. And I'm going to show the design and some results. And finally, conclusion of future research. Um, some challenges in Chile are regarding with the improve of the energy efficiency program for the industrial and transportation system. The conventional solutions, including Chile, to supply energies uh, are based on fuel flow, fuels and a huge hydropower system that is located far away from the consumption. Then it's very important the transmission expansion. And we have other non-conventional solutions. Uh, moreover, it's so important the integration of huge potential of renewal based on distributed energy resource. Then we are, have been working in cost efficiency smart power microgrid solutions in terms of have a low invest uh, in terms of inversion and the efficiency of the plants. And we classify and um, we use this classification uh, based in three types. Coordination smart grid, uh, isolate smart grid, and emergency. I'm going to explain in some details. The first one is regarding to the coordination of the distributed renewable energy uh, and connect to the power grid, sometimes called like virtual power plants. The second one that we have been more is uh, electrification remote village with abundant local renewable energy. Uh, and the idea is to operate in island mode. Mm -hmm. We are mainly focused on this uh, kind of microgrids. And the last one that is recent for us is develop a critical infrastructure power system. Uh, that type of uh, system is used to face natural disaster, disaster as tsunami or earthquake. And call, it's called like emerging emergency microgrids. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but the main point challenges in the microgrid, the high incertainties in the renewable energy, the generation, and the higher fairly rates, that means there, there are no redundancy in the transmission system for the low voltage system. And then I, we need a low investment cost. And also in, the, in this small village, uh, there are lack of qualified personnel to management this kind of microgrids. Then we consider cost effective solutions and we identify three, three level. The first is at design level where do you, do you, it's necessary to decide which kind of technology you have to use in this in the area. Then there are, when you install the microgrid, you need uh, efficient operational system for the real time control of the units. And after that, that is very important, is sustainable of the project in terms of the maintenance. To do that, you need to a good system of forecasting of the renewable generation resource, a control system, monitoring system. A current project in Chile, the, the last three are very new, but the, the first one that I'm going to explain in more details is um, it's a small village in the north of Chile that you can see in this map. It's a, we have been working there around two years before we installed the micro -edit. The village was supplied by just 10 hours by a diesel generator. It's a small village with 100 people, but some day of the day they have a, a 500 people because they have a religion celebration. Okay, and then other small village very near. It's located. We are going to install also a microgrid there, and also the other is here. That the idea is to do the same, a design project, then operation project, and then to install the microgrid. And finally, we have a very new project in Iceland, very remote from the continent. And uh, here, the problem is uh, sometimes the disaster, the tsunami or sun event then happen, and they ask uh, us an emerging microgrid to have a, a backup of the, of the supply. Okay, which is our vision in, in Chile? In Chile, it's a long country that have many bales, and in the bales we have a uh, huge renewable source like sun, wind, uh, geothermal resource, uh, hydro, and also biomass that is possible to use. And the idea for this kind of bales to install uh, technology like photovoltaic panels is possible also to depend my uh, mini hydro. Uh, eolic turbine and so on, biomass uh, uh, generator. And the main challenge here is to coordinate all of these uh, renewable generators. Uh, especially, uh, we have been working in Guatacondo, that is in the northern, the first region of our country. It's a small uh, village that you can see here. Uh, have uh, 100 people, and uh, well, one of the challenges here was uh, in that zone uh, there are many condors birds and that they are protected, and it, it's very good uh, uh, location to install wind turbine. I'm going to talk what happened with the with the wind turbines because that problem. Okay, first uh, in that small village we have. Before the microgrid project, the, the energy was supplied by a diesel generator, a very small photovoltaic panel. And also I include here the water tank because they have some problem with the management of the water tank. And that was a, a challenge also to improve the efficiency of this system. Okay, and we decide then to install this microgrid. Uh, first, we install a bank of battery. Uh, then we change the diesel really by one huge and better really 
a new one, uh, two wind turbine, a photovoltaic panel that's uh, bigger, and we include in the microgrid the management of the water tank as a flexible load. Also, we include in the, in the microgrid the management of the demand using a signal priority to the consumer in each house in order to, to compensate the fluctuation of the renewable generation. I am going to explain this system that is called demand side management. Okay, this is an electrical diagram of this system with one bus and we have more detailed internal electrical parameters. Uh, here you have uh, the water tank system that is uh, connected with the water pump and the water pump is, uh, we have, we send some signal to the water pump in order to have a other flexible load. Also we send to the consumer some signals and we have here the diesel also on the other components than spray before. Okay, some technical developments in the location was to install the battery bank. Uh, currently, we are still working on that in, in the University of Chile in order to, to study the this, this some model of the state of charge that is very important and the state of health of the battery bank. Also, we development we develop a, a control strategy for the inverted that control the battery system. We, we implement a master slave control strategy. Also, we install a tracking system for the photovoltaic panels. And for the birds, <laughs> we, de uh, we develop with other department of design a, a cage in order to protect the birds. That one is so important, <laughs> the condor, because the condor is symbol of in Chile. Yeah. Okay. Technical problems. <laughs> ah, it's okay. And this is a picture of what And uh, uh, you can see here the the photovoltaic panels that we installed there. Okay. Okay. I see a skip. Uh, oh, it's okay. The picture, <laughs> just to show the team that worked there. Well, it was the inauguration with the dean there. Okay, in we de we have been developed. A, I'm going to present two research, two topics, internal research that we have been for this micro -read. First, at the design level, that means before to install the micro -read, we develop a generator of low profile based on self-organized map. And then at operational level, in order to control the units, we develop an energy management system based on rolling horizon strategy. Uh, for, well, this uh, work was, will be presented at the conference uh, uh, soon in June in the World Congress on Competition Intelligence. Of course, we have been many people, and master student Jacqueline Janos was the main uh, author. The main motivation of this is that in a uh, small community, it's, it's very complex to predict the, the, com the consumption at the beginning because it's limited to some schedule, as I'm showing that current project, at, at the beginning, at, it's very high depend of the consumption of each member of the community. Uh, it's totally different fr from the uh, bigger power system. Here the loads have a high uh, variation, a very high variation. Uh, most of the research in the literature on the generation of electricity demand profiles based on real-time measurements. In this case, uh, as shown this figure, this is a consumption at the beginning without microgrid, just for 10 hours. Okay, then it's not possible to have the measurement uh, for all day. 
and we propose uh, include just only socioeconomic aspect and several other variables to, to relate the consumption behavior of the community without considering uh, the measurement. How to do this? It's possible to do this using a, a household classifier based on self-organized map that provide the lower patterns of the profiles uh, using this aspect. The, so, the self-organized map is based, uh, it's an area network based on unsupervised uh, training and extract classification criteria from the data, just from the attribute of the data, like age, uh, like occupation, and so on, in order to classify the different behavior of the people. Okay. This procedure, based on self-organized map, uh, consists on four modules, this K, to generate the low profile. F first, we need survives as an input, okay, in order to obtain some data. Then we classify the, the behavior of the user in the classifier model. And then we search profile model in order to determine the number of classes, type of classes, features, and number of elements of each class. When you have this, you can obtain finally using a, just to zoom different profile the total demand profile. In detail, we have a, a, a description. First, in the input module, you have the relevant information of the community obtained through the survives, and also you can uh, use statistical data, uh, for example, census uh, of population, and so on. Uh, of course, the main important things is to apply individual service for the community in order to determine the number of persons living in each house. Uh, the idea is to determine the, the behavior of the class of people, like old people, like the young people, and so on, in terms of the consumption. Okay? And then the classifier. In the classifier, you obtain the different kind of house. Eh? using this algorithm uh, without a priori uh, to know the number of family member occupation. The idea is to obtain the number of family in each class using this uh, automated classifier. Okay, when you have this, you, you can obtain and search in a database uh, the class of people with uh, very similar characteristic. Okay. Uh, in that point, we, you can use database for other community to turn the typical low behavior in other community, and then you identify this kind of people in your community. Okay, and then to do that, you need a metering system installed in some house, and by using a survey, the characteristic uh, of each house is identified. Mm -hmm. Then the group of database are, could be, as explained before, early couple, for example, uh, adult couple, and so on. That's it. I am going to explain the result, through the result, how is the different behavior of the people. When you have that, the total residential demand is obtained by assuming the product of the number of elements in each class by the profile assigned to each class. Also, and then we have some results. Here, the result in the Watacondo, in order to obtain the different class, we obtain here around uh, seven class, I think. Yes. <laughs> seven class that uh, correspond to different people. For example, here could be uh, young people and here old people. Yeah. In terms of the why we classify in this term? Because they have a different behavior. As you can see, this. For example, for class two, that is in green color, yeah, they have more consumption during the last, uh, in the night, in the evening night. Okay? And it's, it could be associated with the early couple. Okay? And the other kind of people, like a child, a couple with the child, could be like a red color, class one, with less 
consumption in this period. Okay? And when you have the member that uh, belong to each class, you can just to sum the profile in order to obtain the total. And shown here, in the red color, you obtain the total of the load okay, obtained from the different profile with our measurement. Okay? And then, uh, after that, uh, you can use this load profile to determine the unit sites that you require for the installation of the microgrid. And then uh, in the red color, we have the real uh, load that we have for now because we have installed the microgrid that supplied 24 uh, hours uh, all day. Okay? There are errors, of course, because the high stochasticity of the microgrid, uh, they have a lot of effect on the consumption. But we, at the end, we obtain a trend that is very similar to the uh, real low profile that we have now in the Watakondo village. Okay. The, uh, the main, uh, at the end of this uh, work, uh, we have now Watakondo with the different uh, types of uh, behavior of the people. And now we are going to start three new projects. We can use this low profile uh, classification to uh, try to predict the future load in the other microgrid projects. That is very good. It's now we have more, more data to, to start a, dis a very good design uh, for the other microgrids. Mm -hmm. Then this uh, Within this uh, method, based on cell program mass map for generated load in isolated community, the load is very us useful for the design, uh, the unit side of the distributed generators of the microgrid, and the proposed uh, was that in the Watakondo village, obtain a really good uh, result for our project. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am going to explain uh, then other part of the world when the microgrid is installed. You need a very good uh, uh, real-time control system and we develop an energy management system based on rolling hor horizon. And uh, well, this uh, work was presented in last year in a conference in computation intelligence in Paris, and also, well, it, uh, we send a, comp uh, a paper also with other results to a transaction, we hope. <laughs> it's under review also, but uh, have other, include other uh, stochastic uh, problems mm -hmm. that I'm going to explain also. The energy management system provides all that set point for each unit, uh, and the signal from the consumers and we, uh, that call uh, the man site management. The main idea here is to predict the weather condition in order to predict the uh, uh, renewable generations. Mm -hmm. And also it's important to predict the low consumption. Uh, to do that, we have installed the microgrid and we measure other parameters uh, as a state of the church of the battery, for example, and then in, in the energy management system uh, provides the set point to the unit as uh, the level of the active power for the diesel, for example, or, or, or the signal for the inverter of the battery system. Okay. The objective function here the idea is to minimize the operational costs of the microgrid. In this case, the main costs are given by the diesel generator. And then uh, the idea is to supply the water and load demands. Uh, we are going to include these issues in the, in the management system. Consider two days ahead prediction of the weather condition. The idea is to predict the condition in the future in order to take better decision now. And then in the next step, 
you do the same, predict to the head and take decision and in the rolling process. Uh, the unit, it's also important to, to model each unit of the microgrid, conventional renewable units, and in this case we propose, in order to solve this optimization problem, the mixed integral linear models. And of course it's important to the power balance in the microgrid in order to satisfy the, uh, the supply of the energy. Also we have some physical, physical limits. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is the uh, energy management system more detail. That is very is a unit commitment, uh, an economic load dispatch. The main idea here is to measure some variables of the microgrid. At you need to also to meet uh, measure the binary. This is a binary value that give on off of the diesel. If the diesel is on and off, the uh, the level of the tank system, okay, also the voltage and current, the battery, in order to estimate the state of the charge of the battery, that is the initial condition for the optimization process, okay, and using the historical data, this is very important, you can, and the weather forecasting models, we use a most scale model, phenomenological model for the wind and for their solar radiation, you can uh, obtain the generation of the wind, also you can obtain the maximum uh, produced by photo, photovoltaic panels. In this uh, system, we have a surplus of the energy because uh, this is a very good zone to install uh, solar generations. And then we can uh, do something that is not so usual. You can dispatch the solar between some range. Mm -hmm. That is the first uh, output of the system. Then the other output of the system, the set point for the diesel, then the survey answer energy, then the set point for the battery bank inverter. Then uh, this is a binary variable that uh, implies the, some signal to the pump that uh, management the water system like a flexible load. And this is this last one is a signal to the consumer in order to compensate the fluctuation of the renewable generation using the consumer's behavior. Okay, well, here is explain more detail. Of course, you have to predict the load and water consumption. Okay, the objective function here is the idea is to minimize the uh, diesel, yeah, internal operational costs and startup of the diesel. Then you have to penalize the unsupplied energy, of course. Penalize the absorb water supply system. We include the water system in this case. And also the lifetime of the battery bank. You know that they have a life uh, around two years, this kind of technology we, that we install in Watacondo. That's important to include this parameter in the objective function. Then the, you have to, as a main constraint, the power balance. The power, uh, the generation by the diesel, plus the battery bank inverter, plus energy have to be equal to the load that's uh, given by the consumers on the water system, minus uh, solar and wind generation. The solar uh, power is modeled by uh, this uh, simple equation that relates with the uh, solar radiation. Okay? And the solar radiation is calculated by a phenomenolo phenomenological model, a scale model. And then uh, in this one, it's easy to predict the radiation because of a, a, a good behavior and a, a similar pattern every day. And we use uh, we use just a persistent model, that means this. And the power, uh, we assume that the solar power is controlled by the angle, east to west inclination angle of the panels. Okay, the diesel generator. Oh, sorry. 
right? A little worry about that. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, the DCA generator, of course, we, you, we have to modulate the operational cost and also the startup cost. Uh, the operation cost is, is modeling using the fuel consumption queue, okay? That have this type of uh, figure. And it's, it's typical this curve because they have more efficient at this level with higher productions. And we use a piecewise linear segment to modulate this behavior. In order to solve with the uh, mixed inter optimization solver. Okay, this is a representation using a binary auxiliary variables in order to represent each segment. And the startup are represented also with a mixed inter representation. Okay. Also important of course to represent the fuel tank. Yeah. And in this case we represent the volume volume in the tank that at this instance equal, equal to the volume in the previous instance minus the fuel consumption. Okay? And have a minimum and maximum. And also we consider any condition in the fuel, uh, in the level of volume at the end have to be some value. At the end of the optimization, you have to have uh, some uh, level of volume of diesel. Mm -hmm. The battery bank also is a model with as energy uh, equations, yeah. where the, the energy in this instance is equal to the previous minus if the battery is charging or discharging, okay? And of course, uh, the model of the inverter is related with the power in the bank. And eta here are the efficiency, of course. And if we consider a positive value when the battery is inject power to the grid and negative value with the battery charging mode in this case. And here is important, I put this, uh, the, the power in the battery have a minimum and maximum, and the minimum is a dynamic, it's a model that depends on the energy in the previous instant, that depends on the, st the state of charge of the battery. Okay? Uh, as I mentioned before, here we have the power in the battery when we charge in the mode, that's the reason that we have a negative value. Okay? in function of the state of charge. We continue to study this in, at the university. We have the same battery and we have students that continue working in, to improve this model, the state of the charge. Also, it's important the lifetime of the battery bank in order to, to include in the optimization problem. And it's state of the a state of the health, sorry. And then this cost is represented by the state of the health at the end of the prediction horizon, at the end of the two days, minus uh, the initial condition. Okay? And the state of the, the health is represented by the previous uh, value and also depend on the temperature of the battery bank and also depend on the sums working zone. That means if the battery bank is overload, it's a low zone, it's charging zone, and so on. Okay, uh, also we include the water tank volume because we want to improve the management of the water supply as a very simple balance of the volume that depends on the water inflow, water consumption, and cell water consumption. And the main point is the, what, uh, is the water consumption depends uh, of the, in this case, uh, is active by the pump water. The pump that we have to, to fill this tank is a part of the control variables. We can activate or not activate the pump that control the water system. That is, B, this variable is very important because for now, 
for for our development is a uh, is represent the flexible load that we can manage man, in the system. Uh, other important thing is the demand side management that permit to send signal to the consumer in order to modify their consumption. Mm -hmm. The main idea is the expected load that represents bit variable will be equal to the shifting factor per electrical load. The shifting factor could be, for example, 80% uh, of the electric load until 122%. Uh, could be a flexible. Hmm? And this uh, variable, that is a shifting variable, is our uh, optimization variable that will be sent by an urban management system. Also, with we expect that the spec energy have to be higher than the electric load in the same period. That means they use the same uh, uh, appliance during the day. The idea is to distribute in other way follow, following the renewable generation. Okay. Uh, and here I would like to show this clock also was developed in the department in order to send the, the signal to consumer. Of course, their color represents when the, there are not enough energy in the system and they recommend to consumer not uh, have a, a consumption sorry, in, in these hours. We have installed in some house at the moment. Okay, the results of this uh, system uh, were validated. Uh, we compared the, the proposal based on rolling hor horizon with a typical or conventional unit commitment using one day ahead. And we predict two days ahead uh, and the sampling time is 15 minutes and we use CPLEX version to solve this optimization problem. Here we have the results uh, of the prediction for the wind power, solar power, and electrical load. Uh, for one hour ahead, uh, one day, and two days ahead. And uh, here we represent the wind means square error for all variables. In this case, the wind power was predicted using a, a global forecasting system combined with the weather uh, forecasting models that are phenomenological models uh, and the wind power was obtained using the the manufacturer profile of the generation. In this case the solar radiation was predicted using a persistent models that is very simple it's the average of the past values and the electrical load was uh, predicted using this case using neural networks online with the online training. Well, you, you, you t we take very low uh, value here, of course, because the solar have a very good behavior. It's more difficult to predict the behavior of, um, excuse me, the wind power. The wind power increase uh, the error uh, between one hour ahead uh, in comparison with two days ahead. Okay, we have here the results uh, for two scenarios. The first one is for summer season, and the second is winter season. And we compare the control strategy, the unit commitment, compare with the, our proposal energy management system with rolling horizon, that is very unit commitment also, but with rolling horizon. And we evaluate the strap diesel uh, cost, operational cost, uh, then the total cost of the diesel, the energy deficits, Mm -hmm. then serve energy on the total, and the same, okay? Uh, with an improvement, of course, the savings in the diesel using the rolling horizon, and also, um, of course, because we predict the condition every 15 minutes. That's the main point. You, you take in account the prediction of the renewable generation, but every 15 minutes you update you the predictions. That is the main point. And, the, uh, and also we obtain a, a saving because a lower start of the diesel, okay? as you can see here. 
the reduction here per, at the first row you can observe a notable reduction of the star of the diesel. You use uh, in an efficient way the diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same for the winter season. Okay, you also uh, observe a uh, reduction in the cost. Uh, we have also results uh, for checking the demand side management. That means that the demand can be, uh, we send some signal to the consumer. For example, when the minimum is equal to the maximum, this is without demand side management, just the same that before. And here we send some signal, for example, uh, the expected load is equal to 95% of the electric load. You have to reduce the load, the consumption, and when you send a 1.05, it have to be increased. You can increase your consumption. Okay? Of course, you have a bigger, uh, uh, a bigger range, you obtain savings, a better, more savings in terms of total as you can see from without demand until a more flexible consumption. The total uh, cost decrease as demand shift in coefficient are more and made more flexible and the system shift to period when the solar energy is stable. The, the, the idea is to follow the renewable energy generation. In addition, the diesel operation is increasing efficient, its efficiency. Well, here we have one uh, 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 date in the operation in January of the last year uh, of the Watakondo village. In the, in the violet color, we have the consumption during the day. Okay. In the red color, you have the solar generation. In the green color, you have the inverter uh, better uh, working, okay? That means here is, a, of course, charging, and we have, we have to use the battery here and then charging again. Then uh, in the orange color, you have the uh, operation of the diesel generator that is used for two things, to, to provide the energy to the consumer as in this part, and also to charge in the battery. Okay, and in the uh, light blue, you observe the voltage in the battery bank. Mm -hmm. Okay, some uh, remarks. Uh, we present the advantage of the using of rolling horizon. That means you predict every 15 minutes the uh, the renewable generations and the load. Uh, the operation of microgrids uh, using this strategy is reduced uh, in comparison with the conventional unit commitment. The benefit of demand side management are achieved by means of achieving the behavioral consumption to periods in which there are more renewable reserves able. Uh, then also, we include in the, this uh, proposal an efficient management of the water supplies, uh, optimization by optimizing the water pump activation in order to produce a flexible load. Mm -hmm. and finally, uh, in this presentation, uh, I tried to include a, a microgrid concept and as see challenging that we have in our country in Chile. Uh, and we propose a method uh, based on self-organized map for generate a low profile at the beginning without a microgrid using some socio socioeconomic aspect. And it's very useful to design the unit size of distribute generator of microgrid project. And at the second level, that is very important in the operational level, uh, we propose energy management system that permit to operate the, the microgrid and showed economic benefits. This uh, manager also includes, uh, as a novelty, the uh, management of the water system and also uh, the management of demand. 
Okay, uh, now we are uh, start to work in a development on a stochastic approach in order to solve this problem because uh, uh, it's a stochastic uh, environment. We, we have to develop here to face the stochastic environment given by the renewable generations. Mm -hmm. Especially for the wind turbine in the north of Chile, the solar radiation uh, have, of course, uncertain, but uh, it's, there are a lot of uncertainty in the prediction of the wind speed. Also, uh, the idea is to reduce the step of our optimization or, or change the, or, or maybe to, to apply multiple steps uh, for the optimization problem. Also, it's possible to use multi agents and full detection algorithms uh, for other modes of the microgrid because here. We are isolated, but the idea is to, to apply this with a, a, a microgrid that are connected to the grid and have to disconnect from the grid. And finally, uh, uh, the idea is to worry in network integration microgrid and optimization of microgrid group at a virtual power plants. <laughs> okay, uh, this is my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've opened the floor for any questions. Any questions? Uh, I have a question regarding that the low problem that you have there with the um, the diesel engine and the slow power. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about. So sometimes you run 100% on renewable energy for, for this storage, right? Because uh, yes, of course, because the solar is uh, is abundant in this zone. So it runs in a yeah, yes, yes. So you don't have any problems with clouds or uh, uh, yes, of course. We try to 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 predict this, including the new models, the clouds. But uh, in eighty percent or seventy percent of the year they have a very good condition with the solar with the solar radiation. Where is the wind there? No, we in this uh, we we are not ready to install the wind uh, eolic because the problem it, it was a huge problem the problem with the birds it was so complex to install the cage for the wind uh, yeah it seems like uh, yes, yes. especially the tail is yes. the same as it's not already installed but so in this case it's running on solar or so no no yes yeah, and the big yes on solar it was a, it was installed uh, in Two years ago, the solar. Just that then, I think the diesel engine is 150 kVA, right? So it's a very low load. Ah, the, the point is that uh, it's overestimate, really. It was the first project we have the financial support. Uh -huh. And also because uh, they have more uh, consumption in some days, in August, when they have a religion celebration, they have around 500 people. The idea is to cover also this demand. So in that way, you're running that piece at 20% of the load, which yeah. the efficiency or the frequency. Yeah. Right? That is the point that we we try to the opt the the optimal point in the diesel is to generate more power uh, that cover not just the demand, also charging the battery. But it seems that well, the other batteries with the solar is almost enough. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes. Also, because we have a, a very huge uh, panels, we also we can control the inclination of the panels. Yes, because we have a surplus of the energy. We don't have uh, enough space in the battery bank to to save uh, to store the the production of the photovoltaic panels. And some, some, sometimes. Hmm? So is the wind turbine now working? Or not? Uh, it ha they have problem now with the weather condition that soon. It's, uh, it's totally unsolent now because sometimes in the in the winter, we, we start the winter in Chile, uh, it's totally closed because have uh, alluviones, uh, uh, have a lot of uh, rains and it's impossible to go there. The idea was in Sale on March, but 
It's yeah, late. It's, <laughs> Any other questions? Can you make some observations about the cost comparisons? Of, yeah, uh, so this microgrid in this village, you know, some sort of uh, levelized mm -hmm. unit energy cost versus grid power in Chile costs. Some, some estimate of the differences? Uh, I don't have the, really this information because uh, it really was, um, this is the first uh, microgrid in Chile. It was really support. My point of view, it's not economical <laughs> issue. It no, was a, yeah. it was decided by a mining company to have the first microgrid based on renewable energy in Chile. It's the cost is still increase every day <laughs> because at the, the beginning. What was the cost of the equipment? Uh, I had. What was the cost of the whole project? What is it? Um, no, more than uh, one million dollars. I think it's uh, huge because uh, every day it, uh, you have to see it's from the university. We start with the, we were uh, academics and more of the, uh, the team is uh, students and also young engineer. And we start with the project uh, with some budget and then the project was delayed. We don't have installed already the wind turbines because we have problem with the, how to arrive to the location. Uh, we, every day we spend investment. From my point of view, it was the first project. We have now three projects uh, that we have to do. I think totally different. We, now we have the background. We can start a very good project in the other locations. Oh, sorry, because I, I don't work in that part really in the economic issues. In our paper, the last one, we, we have a comparison in terms of the, with the unit commitment, with the rolling horizon and so on, but it's not uh, the investment. Mm. We have another question? Yes, uh, is, is optimization goal has to be sold in every 15 minutes, uh, using the microcontroller as the rest? So what, what will happen if the if the if the transition will not reach a, a feasible solution or a solution in this 15 minutes using the branch and cut technique? Because branch and cut technique may not lead to a solution. What happens in this situation? No, of course, but uh, well, we use a simplex and uh, of course they have some uh, already have uh, some decision uh, rules to take that consideration because it's a real system. And you can use, uh, there are many strategies, but we use a simple that uh, consider feasible solution that you've done before. Okay. It's not a fact really because it's 50 minutes, each 50 minutes you can maybe in some step to, to hold the previous solutions, of course. But really we test this with uh, 500 uh, data, that is 500 dates, uh, and we say uh, we don't have this problem really. Because in the model, the, the, the power losses in the cables and the line are not considered, so, so may lead to, to a situation even if it's not well, well, that's not an issue. Actually, yeah, it's not an issue. Okay, uh, that's not an issue. Mm. And also the forecasting, if there's a forecasting error, so there may not be a balance between the supply and the demand. If, if, if of course, there's a forecasting. Well, we have the value for that. Yeah. We're working now with cloud in that point to, to evaluate the trade-off between the forecasting uh, and the level of solutions, the, the accuracy of the solution of the energy management system. You have a bigger enough system, doesn't matter. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah, yes. It's not optimal. But we, yeah, we can, Just like we system. have a power balance no, anyway. No, no. <laughs> in our system, we don't necessarily get solutions every five minutes, right? <laughs> But you have buffers. I had a question regarding that. How about the frequency? You show the voltage. What, what about the frequency? Is that an issue? Yes, of course. We are working on that. Uh, we are not so automatic to that part. It, uh, uh, we developed a master slave strategy inverted that control the frequency. And also, the diesel is, we bought that diesel. Uh, and of course, when the diesel is uh, off, uh, the the inverter control the frequency 
of the grid. I mean, but this is issue what, also. What, what kind of loads are these? Just light and... Uh, well, we have the consumer and the light during the, yeah. the evening, just all. Um, some... Do you have well, any motors, like compressors? No, but the idea in this uh, uh, project is to include a, a bicycle uh, to uh, to have a automated so vehicle. The, the yes. Okay. That is so. What follow up question? From your experience now, are you able to extract information along these lines? So there is the demand for the community that you know every day or every week. And from the historical data, from the time we've been operating, what proportion of the time the solar provides X percent of the total demand? And then are there situations where solar actually exceeds the, the, the demand? So you know, do you have a stack which explains how much solar provides on a daily basis, weekly and monthly basis? of the demand, and then you stack them up with the other resources you have. And when you use the batteries to charge up, when you have excessive amount of uh, power from solar, for example, you have such information that you can back out of this. Mm. If I were wanting to plan another system with demand X, which combinations of resources would I use so I know that uh, this can meet the need? Oh, OK, OK, yeah. at the design level. Uh, yes, because uh, we have a lot of experience with the uh, photovoltaic and wind uh, energy. This In this case, was totally uh, designed not because the location, really, because in this location is more appropriate uh, photovoltaic as, as a solution. The wind speed is okay, but uh, it's not necessary, and uh, we are going to have other issues with the wind. Um, uh, well, of course, I think the evaluation of the solar radiation in other locations is so important, of course. And also in the wind. I can't understand very well why it's... Uh, well, well, how to operate well, this? Well, it's if I have a well, no, 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 it's about... Say the demand required is uh, estimated to be 10 megawatts or... Yes, so yes. How to distribute the energy? I have installed capacity of solar of 4, 6 or 8 or whatever. You have different combinations of generation sources to meet that demand. Okay. The solar capacity. Now what I want to know is on an operating basis, what's the data that shows that from that installed capacity of solar, how much was the power output to meet the demand? Okay, okay. And every week and every month, so you can gauge how to size your system for the next time. Okay. It could be like an optimization problem also. <laughs> Of course, it's better to install for the... You have to take in consideration the investment, of course, of the solar and diesel or wind, and also uh, the condition of the radiation and wind and so. Uh, but you have to take many issues, really, because also it's important the operation of the system at the end. It's important to have a, ba a, in a, a battery bank system, also take the investment of the battery bank. Uh, yeah, but, but in this case, you over the system. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, is that is point. Uh, yes, no, yes. No, part. we don't work in that part in design level. I think it but you of course, the solar supply. Yes, yeah, look at that. Yes, but the if you. Is what, 10 and the, mm. the solar is 20, it's twice or mm. So I guess yeah, that's. You know, you have to take, also we take on some, you have to take not just technical, scene, also uh, uh, social aspects, really. We discuss this technology with the people and, you know, it's better for, um, it's look good, uh, photovoltaic and like wind. They were, they, they choose the location of the solar photovoltaic and the wind. I know that you talk to me about technical, how to do it. I think in the, in the optimization problem, you can solve, you can do a power balance and train the, the best solution. <laughs> but I think it's, a, it's something you have to think, it's not just a technical solution, it's a social aspect. Yeah. Any further questions? Yeah. 
Yeah, there is. Um, thing, as you can show here, is that the load is supplied basically okay. oh, by, uh, by the solar. So the solar and the battery are active in this region because the diesel is providing zero power. Yeah. Yeah. So this is on the side of the battery, you're showing the voltage, but on the AC side, because the loads are AC and the system is isolated. So there should be some mm, frequency and voltage. I mean, I think you uh, refer to that as well. Uh, so the inverter uh, for the photovoltaic and the battery are the ones that are stabilizing the Yes, the yes, of course. Uh, and you don't have any problem with that, no? Because yeah. it's not doing anything. I mean, this yes. at the time the diesel is not in operation. Yes, of course. We, we, we are start now, just uh, we are currently working in that sense to group control between two inverters at, uh, at the university. But the, we don't validate our proposal in the what the, idea is, the next step is to validate this in, in the Watacondo village. Uh, now it's working because uh, we developed a control strategy in the inverted of the bank battery using master slave strategy. This is point and also we both the inverters of the solar uh, photovoltaic panel that also work with group. These results that you're showing, these are experimental for the... Yes, it's in the operation. It is a typical day in the Watakondo village so now. Means that it is already taken care of, the Yes, of course. <laughs> well, yes, you account. have one inverter, but it's just taken care of. One is, I think, for the photovoltaic. Yeah. It's a photovoltaic. Yeah. It's, uh, yes. That's it. These two are the ones that are... The no, but I think it's the, I think it's the battery. Uh, the battery, uh, it's uh, take the decision term, the voltage and frequency in this case. Okay. So it's one control. It's the one that is kind of yes. better than the Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. Yes. Were you able to measure the wind before starting the project? Yes, of course. We, but no, not so many measurements. When we start the project, uh, the wind speed was, we measurement is a very low wind speed. And then now we have more wind <laughs> because more probably probably because we have some mistake at the beginning. How to do you, do you know? Do you have to measurement different level? Yes, of course. But now we we have a historical database of wind and in this better you that know, we assume at the numbers, beginning. Do you have a number? Yes, it's around ten meters per second. You know, uh, around si it's six meters per second is OK. And an annual one? Hmm? The average annual? It's average, yes, I think, so, yes, I think. I have been working in that data now. Just um, between six and ten, I think. That's really high. <laughs> yes, but at the beginning, it was less than four. For us, it's not. Hmm? And the future for the location In a single region. In a single region. It's far away from, yes. Far away meaning? From the, yeah, lead far, far away, oh. the, in the hill, <laughs> really. In the hill oh. of the village. In terms of distance, what? Uh, just uh, less than one kilometer. But you can see from the village. Oh. You know, it's not possible in the middle. Question? Because it's, it has to be in the, in the hill in order to obtain more better condition of the wind. Who takes control of the voltage and the frequency of the grid? Is it the battery or the reason? It inverted in the case we have the uh, modify. We, we, we development some strategy, we program this strategy in the mm. so, to take control. It was a development in the university. So and the battery takes control over the voltage and frequency mm. when the reason is the system. Yes, that's the point. All right, well, Master uh, strategy. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doris. I appreciate it. Okay. Very interesting. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thank you.